Hello lovelies, in this video we're going to be looking at the water cycle and the carbon cycle for your GCSE biology. These nutrient cycles, the way that carbon and water moves through the systems is really, really important for you to understand as it links to a lot of things. So this is a sort of topic that could be linked to a lot of other things in the exam. So we're going to look at two nutrient cycles today. We're going to look at the carbon cycle and the water cycle. But first, let's talk about why nutrient cycles are important in the first place. Nutrients, which is a broad term we're using here, and we'll talk about some examples in a minute, they have to cycle around the Earth. So in individual habitats, or they just have to cycle because there's an only a fixed amount of each element on the planet. They arrive at the Big Bang and no new carbon or hydrogen and nitrogen is arriving to the planet or leaving the planet. It just cycles around and around. Now I've already given some of these examples, but the nutrients, they cycle through both biotic, so remember that means living, and abiotic, that means non-living part of the ecosystem. So they go through organisms and through things like the habitat, the soil, the earth, the water, the rocks. So water is one of them, we're going to look at that today. Nitrogen is another one, and carbon is another one of an example of nutrients that cycle. Now, these nutrients are all essential for life because they contain elements, or they are elements, that are needed to make molecules that organisms need to survive and grow. It's the molecules that are essential for life itself. So let's have a look at what they actually provide in terms of nutrients, what are they needed for? So first of all, nitrogen, we need nitrogen as an element because it is what helps us to make DNA, which contains nitrogen, and also proteins, which uh, also contain nitrogen, amino acids are made using nitrogen. We also need carbon. Carbon is essential for all the molecules that we need for life. It's present in sugars, so carbohydrates, glucose, for example, and also fats and protein. We don't have carbon and hydrogen, we can't make any of those molecules which are essential for life. Why is water useful then? Well, water provides the oxygen and hydrogen we need to make some of those molecules for life, fats, proteins, sugars, and also we need water to, all, most all living organisms need water to survive. That's why we're living on this planet. So plants get water, nitrogen, and carbon from the air and from the soil. So water and nitrogen from the soil, nitrates are dissolved in water, and carbon in carbon dioxide from the air. And they use those molecules to make biomass. We talked about this in the previous video, to make tissues, that's how they grow. And that starts the cycles most of the time, or it's part of every single cycle we're gonna talk about. Plants taking these nutrients from the atmosphere or from the soil is what kickstarts this these cycles mostly. We aren't going to discuss the nitrogen cycle in this video, so if you need to learn the nitrogen cycle in depth for your exam board, then there'll be a dedicated nitrogen cycle video for you because there's a lot to go through there. But before we go on to the cycles themselves, there's one thing we also have to talk about, which is microorganisms. So microorganisms are essential for the cycling of nutrients. Not water, but for the nutrients we're going to look at. So nitrogen cycle in another video, but carbon cycle here as well. If we don't focus on them or make sure that we're aware of how they work, then we don't necessarily understand those essential parts and steps of those cycles. The specific microorganisms we're talking about here are decomposers. Decomposers are types of microorganisms that live in the soil and they break down molecules in dead organisms, living organisms that were are now dead, so it could be plants or animals, and so they can then be reused again. So those molecules are then released in some way into the soil or into the atmosphere so they can be reused. And the decomposers are actually feeding on this dead material, so they use it as part of their feeding process. That's why they do it. So when we talk about microorganisms, what examples do we mean here? So most decomposers are either types of bacteria or types of fungi. If you can't remember what they look like, here's a bacterium and here's a mushroom, which is part of a fungus, a fruiting body of a fungus. So most of the microorganisms we mean when we talk about decomposers are sort of microscopic fungi and bacteria that live in the soil 
and they're the ones that carry out decay. If you've ever seen your fruit bowl decay, anything go mouldy in your fruit bowl in your fridge, these are the organisms that are causing those kind of white fuzzy moulds or they're breaking down and making the food go all mushy and things. So these are decomposers, they carry out the process of decay. That's what we mean by breakdown and decompose. They're decaying the organic material, so the, the once living matter. And they do that by digesting, as I said, the dead organisms. So they're literally digesting. They, they absorb some of the nutrients themselves, but they often release a lot of these nutrients then into the soil or the air so that they can be used again by other organisms. And then they help the cycle to continue. If you need to learn more about decay specifically, then again, we're going to do that in a dedicated video to itself with a bit more detail for those people that need it for their exam board. Okay, so let's start with the carbon cycle. I've got like a basic model of one here and we're just gonna annotate it as we go through. So the first stage of my carbon cycle, I'm gonna be looking towards the sun and the plant because that's where photosynthesis is happening. So photosynthesis by the plant is removing carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. And like we said, the plant's gonna be using that carbon that is taken and made through photosynthesis to make things like glucose and then use that to grow tissues and cells and therefore it'll be trapped in the plant. So then when the plants are eaten by animals and then when other animals are eaten by other animals through the food chain, that carbon's gonna pass into those organisms, pass into those animals. And again, they obviously use some of it to grow like we did talk about in the food chains video, but also they, they will adjust some as waste as well. So that's where the carbon's going at the moment. What then happens is obviously the carbon is all trapped up in the tissues and the bodies of these plants and animals. So eventually those plants and animals are going to die. And when they die, 